Are you a professional pillow fighter or a nine to five low cost time travel agent? Or maybe real estate sales on Mars is your profession. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is you do, however complex or intricate, Monday.com can help you organize, orchestrate, and make it more efficient. Monday.com is the one centralized platform for everything work-related. And with Monday.com, work is just easier. Monday.com, for whatever you run. Go to Monday.com to learn more. Well, I don't see the point in waiting any longer. Let's bring her out. A star attraction. The one you came to see. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Ms. Judy Gold. All right, let me just, let, let's just, this is my first podcast. So it's called Kill Me Now, which is a phrase I use at least 20 to 50 times a day. Uh-huh. Um, because everything annoys me. Uh, I have a, I don't know what we would call him. That was good. That's that a was good, good start. Okay. That's Lauren great. Hennessy mm-hmm. was a student of mine. Uh, and uh, then, I don't know what he did, um, but he is. I won my way into your yeah, heart. Yeah, he is a transgendered uh, male who will not get surgery, which is okay. fine with me. But, you know, half the time mm. I'm like, she, he, uh, whatever. I saw uh, she, basically he is whatever. So my, mm-hmm. this is my co-host. Whatever, whatever. Whatever's my pronoun. Yes. And then my first guest who I couldn't be more thrilled about. Frank Conniff. Hey, Frank fucking Conniff. Thank you. So I'm excited. Are you guys excited? I'm Don't so we have excited. some effects we can put in now or no? <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, I can throw some whatever stuff in. shit. Anyway, um, <laughs> you can follow Frank at, at Frank Conniff on, uh, on the Twitter. The Twitter. Yeah. And on, fa- on the Facebook. And it's two too. N's, two F's. Yes. And your podcast is called Pod House 90. Yes, it is. Why have I not been on that podcast? Um, I, I don't okay. know, but it's, so, I, I did all of them in L.A. So uh, okay, <laughs> so um, kill me now is on Facebook, <laughs> Facebook dot com. Kill me now cast, and mm. are we doing a Twitter? But you can follow me on Twitter at Judy Gold. Uh, it's at J E W D Y G O L D. This is a re- you know what? It's if spelled I, the correct way. Yeah, if I was listening to this podcast. I would fucking turn it off right now, but I just did. It It was like so fucking not exciting. Uh I've already turned off the recording, so you did. It doesn't even matter. Anyway, a lot of of good information. Thank you. Welcome to Mm -hmm. Kill Me Now. Uh I am your host Judy Gold, Mm -hmm. and here we are. We are in the the uh, Keith and the Girl Studios in Queens. The now Kill Me Now is a podcast about the things that piss people off. Mm -hmm. And I figured, look, everything pisses me off. I want to have people on. To really talk, because you know what? There's so many people who hold it all in, right. and when you're pissed off, you're passionate. Yes. So what better thing to talk about? Now, I'm just going to start with today mm-hmm. and the <laughs> fucking things that piss me off. Okay. Okay, so number one. How long is the show? Shut the fuck up. Ben, <laughs> Ben, my 13-year-old son, who's uh, six, two and a half now and taller than me and mm-hmm. has a 14 men's shoe, but it's tight, mm-hmm. he says to me. Uh, mommy, first of all, he comes home. I brought him to this basketball practice. He comes home at like six o'clock yesterday and then falls asleep on the couch, wakes mm. up three and a half hours later. I was at my show, Clinton, uh, the musical that mm. I'm playing Eleanor Roosevelt mm. and Linda Trippin. And, uh, typecast. And, yeah, I played the two most attractive women in politics. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, uh, he falls asleep on the couch, mm. which means he's never fucking going to sleep. So we always watch The Daily Show and Larry Mm. Wilmore together Uh um, because I want him to know about comedy. That is my goal. Yeah. And uh, so I said, Ben, I'm supposed to go out for a drink with these friends. He's like, Mommy, I'm just going to be on the phone with Natalie. He's got this fucking girlfriend. All they do is FaceTime. Mm. And um, he falls asleep on the couch for three and a half hours. I get home at like 1115. Mm hmm. He's fucking, I go, I, he's like, mommy, when are you coming? He's like texting me, texting me. I get in the fucking apartment. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. This is last night. Right. I'm like, Ben, where are you? No one's in the apartment. Mm-hmm. And then I start getting these texts. I don't know. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. 
I go, Was Ben. Was he sleepwalking? Ben, where are you? Hmm. What room could I be in? I mean, he's fucking giant. And my, you know my apartment. There's no fucking place. I went in the closet. I, you know, I, I, Again? I had been, I know I was in the closet. In I don't the, fucking want to go back in the fucking closet. That was you in know? the metaphor wing yeah. of your house. <laughs> she's that rich and so then Lisa who's my neighbor who has a dog who's 13 uh, and, oh. and when it dies she's literally I swear to god uh, Monty um, mm. who only eats home cooked food and uh. has really bad breath anyway but it's cute so she came up to see how tall Ben was because mm. he's had this growth spurt and just to say hi because I never <laughs> talked to her he's a freak so she's she with me and charges. she's looking mm -hmm. and and I'm like, I swear to God, he's here. And I'm screaming his name. And then I just keep getting these fucking texts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who knows where I am? Blah, blah, blah. So he's hearing so, you wherever he is. Right. Then, right? And <laughs> apparently I bumped it. I bumped into people on the street outside the building and he heard me outside. And I heard someone screaming, Judy Gold, mm -hmm. Judy Gold. And I'm looking around. I'm like, who the fuck is calling my name? <laughs> you thought mm -hmm. your place was haunted. So mm -hmm. no, this was outside. Then I get up and he's like, where am I? Where am I? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> he was under, you know, that big ass desk in his room. Yeah. This big ass desk uh -huh. that you can close and open. Mm -hmm. He's fucking under the desk. Mm -hmm. Like oh, that's perfect because it has a little like crawl space where you right. can't see inside. And I was like, because I had gone in his room. I go, there's no way, there's nowhere to hide in his room in here. <laughs> that was the first room I said to Lisa, don't go in there because there's no fucking way he's in there. So I, f the dog found him, <laughs> uh -huh. and then I go, oh nice. my god, and he goes, oh, there's no place to hide. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I mean, I. I love my family because uh, we're so, like, I come home to oh someone man. texting me, like, and uh, so then, he, of course, he was up till, like, three in the morning, uh -huh. um, and I had to, his back hurts, so he's like, can you give me a massage? I'm like, no, can you give me a fucking massage? Oh, wow, I never got a massage I know. I had one up. of those those balls <laughs> things that you oh, can okay. rub, yeah, uh -huh. and then, <laughs> shut up, and, um... <laughs> And then he, you know, so then this morning, so I go to bed at like 2.30. Uh-huh. And he's like, wake me up at 7.15. I'm like, bad, because nothing will wake him up. Uh-huh. Oh, he's so kind of like you. So I have to wake him up. I know, he's the worst. He's worst. 7.15. Mm -hmm. I go, Ben, get up. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, then, the, then it's like snooze. Seven to, ben, it's 7.25. <laughs> <laughs> then it's like 7.35. And he's like, What? Why didn't you wake me up at 7.15? I'm like, I fucking did wake you up at 7.15. And then I was like, I'm not making lunch. Here's $15. Go get a fucking sandwich. <laughs> I could just see you and Ben being like, okay, you wake me up tomorrow. Okay, okay, you wake me up tomorrow. Oh, please. Just nothing no, ever. No one can't ever. wake up. So anyway, and then I came for my first podcast. I was so excited. Uh, and I got an Uber. Uh -huh. And the guy's like, uh, Judy, um, you know, they know your name. Yeah. Can you give me the address? Because the address changed on his Uber. So like fucked up with the uh, addresses. And uh, I put in 29th Avenue instead of 29th Street. Ooh, on his what a so I, end, I know. So I ended up on the old other part of town. Oh. And here we are. So oh. that's it, Frank. Wow. Um, that's quite a, quite a story. Thank you. I must say. Um, so. <laughs> so Queens would be the moral of the story. Yeah, whatever. Speaking mm. of Queens, mm -hmm. do you have a girlfriend? Uh, at the moment, um, that's hard to, uh, to say. I, I did have a girlfriend. You did? Uh, and uh, she's in jail right now. You are badass, Frank. Is that <laughs> true? It is true. Tell when us about you your the... hot jailbird I'm girlfriend. I'm the fucking host! <laughs> uh, can we get a new mic in here, please? Shut new up. mic? <laughs> Lauren is talking too much. This is the last show Lauren's mm -hmm. doing. But anyway, um, so wait, you... Uh, so this is a girl that I... Um, uh, a very old-fashioned love story. I met her on Facebook. And, uh, wait, let me cry. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so she lives in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Um, but she came, I did a, um, a, uh, sci-fi convention mm -hmm. in, um, Pensacola, Florida. Because you were a huge, Frank, if you don't mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. huge part of Mystery Science uh, Theater 3000, which was one of my favorite shows ever. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And, it's, it's, uh, um, yeah, it's, and you can, where can they get it to hear it, to watch it? Oh, it's all over the place. You can watch it on, uh, Vimeo. You, you know, what's great about that on, show. And then uh, we'll continue with uh, your fucking felon girlfriend. <laughs> um, <laughs> that you picked the movies mm -hmm. for them. Yeah, to watch. I did. I'm yeah. the one who, who, who picked them. So yeah. 
Frank's uh, a genius. Uh, anyway, we'll get to that later. So anyway, jail. So she uh, she visited me in um, at this convention. It was the first time we were face to face, and we had a lovely time. When was uh, this? This was like about uh, three weeks ago or so. And okay, uh, so this is a three week old girlfriend. Well, yeah, that's why I'm saying okay, it's go ahead. like things are, are a right, little so, in flux now because she's in jail. Okay, but, so what uh, happened? So you meet? Did you make so out? So I made her. Yeah, we you know we had a very nice, uh, did you intimate uh, things went on in the hotel room? What does she look like? Very uh, attractive, very pretty. How old? Uh, like 30 ish. Why? Why did these go? That's another thing that pisses me off in the <laughs> kill me now thing. Yeah. Is these but you fucking- know what? That's not my thing, though. This just happened to be who but I hooked up not- with. It's Wait. not my thing. I'm, I've gone out with women in their late 40s, in their 50s. I'm very attracted to women in. in uh, I'm just saying. That are if my the age. woman was 70, this like is you, just how it okay? happened. Like me. <laughs> not <laughs> yet, but give it, a, give it a couple and, of years. And the, and the uh, uh, guy was 30. It uh, would never fucking happen, okay? Um, I'm just saying. Guys get a it fucking will, break. Well, it would happen if the woman was Martha Ray and the guy was Mark Harris. But That's uh, true. That's uh, true. And if the woman had $50 billion. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right, yes. Okay, go. Um, but uh, so uh, so we spent time together, but then uh, she did had- Did she sleep in your room? She did. She yeah. stayed in my room, yes. Okay, and, did uh, you feel love feelings? I felt- <laughs> <laughs> I felt feelings of uh, great tenderness. Okay, I must say. Okay, and um, and so, but then she she had this um, this thing hanging over her, and, and I don't want to get into details. Oh she, come on, you can't say she went to jail. And all right, she just, had like um, you know uh, charges from the past, and and she tried to avoid them, like kind of uh, drug you know drug related oh, kind okay. of things. And um, like bad drug. Now, let's just say my, my one of my best friends, Aram, is here. She's a retired police lieutenant. Uh oh. She's the best fucking friend you could ever uh-huh. have, and she's the best laughter. Uh huh. If you were to guess what the charges were, Aram, mm-hmm. what would what would you say? Possession. Possession. Yeah, it was, and it was. She got involved yes, with some Aram. some, some yeah. bad people, and uh, okay, okay. And so it was is hanging she on over, the drugs her and, now? She, and she, no, and okay. that's the thing is, she thought that. That done. she was going like, to get plead out of it, but it's like orange is the new black. When but they told on yeah. yeah, but after uh, um, after we were together, she had her court date, and then the court date didn't go well. The judge was an asshole, and he made her serve four months in prison, and that's where it's at now. So boo, yeah, wow, that sucks. Yeah, legalized so Seattle. What kind of prison is she in? Um, I don't know. Hopefully, a, a really hot one. With a lot of foxy chicks. No, I don't know what uh, the orange is. The new black prison, yes, obviously. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, mm. I don't know what that voice was that just spoke. <laughs> <laughs> so Frank, uh-huh. I've known you. Uh, we met in Minneapolis. Yes, we did. Now, when you were uh, you grew up in New York, and I your did. father uh-huh. was a very famous writer. Well, he was a journalist, and in his time, he was yes. he was pretty well known. Right. You know. And what about your mom? My mom was was just a uh, housewife and mother. What do you mean, just? <laughs> do you know how hard those women work? <laughs> um, no, she had you know five kids right. by the time she was thirty. And um, Ugh, kill me now. I know that's kill that was me now. That was the situation pretty God, much. Got her vagina. And, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and which number were you? I was number three, the middle kid. Ugh, two older, mental, two younger. Mental. Are the other ones as mental as you? Or no? um, I, in their own way, I guess. Okay. You know, are they all married with kids? Um, or? yeah. Um, my sister isn't. My brother Tony is divorced, mm. and my brother uh, Mike is married. And, and my brother, and I have another brother, Rex, who passed away a couple. Oh, years ago. I'm sorry. Yeah. And so. then, uh, any gays in the? No Land. gays, none that That's have come so out that I, that I know of. Well, know? I think it's time for it. So, um, <laughs> Not so yet. instead of coming out, hey, you are young. dating people in jail. That's uh, what you yes. do instead of coming out. <laughs> I find <laughs> it's more suitable <laughs> right. to uh, to, to the shit that <laughs> right. I'm into. So, Not my, as much sex that way. The thing that I... Well, not for the next... Excuse me? Next... Did you hear that voice? Okay, <laughs> so the thing that I... Um, I loved about bonding with you. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So we were in Minneapolis, and uh-huh. I was. It was the nineties, and right. I was. I was an up and coming. You I, were. I I worked my ass off. Mm-hmm. Like I really, unlike one the of comics, the funniest people I've ever oh, seen. By stop. the way, stop. It's true. I love it's you, true. and I loved you because. You know, when you get respect uh-huh. from someone that, who you respect, uh-huh. it's the greatest feeling. And I, 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 I had known of you, and mm-hmm. I just, and everyone, you know. 
Henry, everyone was like. Well, when I first met you, um, uh, you were playing at the Acme Comedy yes. Club, and um, and and I and you were having a bit of a rough show, but I was laughing hysterically, mm-hmm. and you were kept pointing. You didn't know who I was, right. but you were like, "Whoever you are back there, I love you," you know. <laughs> and then I came back and I met you afterwards. And I had heard about you uh-huh. from Henriette and all uh-huh. these other people, but uh, yeah, I I would I purposely went on the road mm-hmm. because I knew I could kill in New York, and I wanted mm-hmm. to. But, you know, some people didn't get me, uh-huh. which is fine because now I don't fucking care. But right. it took 30 years for me to go, mm. you know, who gives a shit? So right. um, we got stuck. We became fast friends. And, yes. got, and there was a snowstorm, like a, a huge a gigantic blizzard. historic snowstorm. Yes. And I was stuck in my hotel. I think mm. it was a nice hotel, too, right? And now, Ruth Gold. Wow, that what was a non sequitur. Uh, uh, um, it was a technical difficulty. Okay, you were talking about weather, so I was uh, trying to, but that has music in front of it. And didn't make sense. So, moving on. How's okay. that? How's that marijuana? You wanted <laughs> sound bites. <laughs> you want to hear it? We can wait. It let's hear it. Let's hear what it is. And now, Ruth Gold's words of encouragement. This is my mother. Uh, Judith, please call me tomorrow morning whenever you get up. The message is for Judy, for Henry, and for Ben. Where are you all in this weather? Let me know how you're making out. I'm waiting patiently. Granny. Thank you. Thank you. She always says... (laughs) <laughs> Thank you for that, Lauren. That was a, a yeah, words that, of wisdom um, that was from just my what mother. This, uh, discussion <laughs> yeah, needed. that was great. Thank you it for interrupting with that. that. I thought we sure. were doing the words yeah. of wisdom yeah. at the end of the fucking podcast. <laughs> oh, we didn't discuss it. But, yeah. Um, anyway, but you were talking uh, folks, about weather. All right. So anyway, uh, by, by the so, way, folks, we're glad you could uh, attend our tech rehearsal. Yes. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you very much. Kill me now, baby. <laughs> Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Miss Judy Gold. So we get stuck in the snowstorm, Uh and I loved Frank. um, Mm -hmm. And he came over to my hotel room, Uh and we ordered in room service. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I think the show was canceled. Mm -hmm. It might have been, although they, yeah. they, it's really, they don't cancel shows. He, the, the cold weather there uh, doesn't bother. But you notice actually one of, uh, if I can bring up one of my treasured memories, not just of you, but of all time. But mm-hmm. it's, we were at this um, club in a uh, uh, restaurant, uh, hipster place in, oh, yeah. um, uh, I think it was called Cafe Lucci. No, not Cafe Lucci, but whatever. I forget the name of it. It was like the hip place where all the hipsters went. In Minneapolis, and it was an afternoon. It wasn't too crowded, and uh, we were like paying our check or something. And then this this like total hipster dude was talking to someone about um, the Liberace Museum. And right, he, he had been to see the Liberace Museum, and Judy overhears him, and very sweetly, and with you know just as like a really fun thing, she's like, "Oh, I went to the Liberace Museum in Vegas. It is the best. It is so much fun." And this hipster just like gave you like a disdainful look. Mm-hmm. Of, and then then after that, it was like an hour of Judy going, oh, man, you are so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Oh, edgy, controversial. Ooh, edge, edge, oh. controversy. Ooh, you're so cool. I mean, I he just, that. I've never, and you know, I've never seen a hipster like get his comeuppance. Right. right in the same way since. And first of and all, you like can't I be said, a hipster it's... and go and like go to the Liberace Museum. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. It's closed. But now. I think I... his thing was, oh, you re- you know, you didn't enjoy it ironically enough, you know. So right. I can't I can't uh, engage with you about it. Yeah. You know? Ugh, I yeah. loved that place. Yeah. And I, I remember I went with my uh, father when he uh, was alive and I, I kept going back because uh, the people there were psychotic. Like uh, they they didn't know the people that worked there did not know. That Liberace was gay uh-huh. or dead, uh-huh. so it was like 
<laughs> and then here is where, and he loved the ladies. And I, so what I would do, uh-huh. I would go in and ask them all these questions. Uh-huh. Like, who did he live? I would just go on and on mm-hmm. and ask them because that's all they want to do is try, fucking mental cases. Uh-huh. But I love Liberace. Have you ever seen the uh, the Liberace movie, Sincere, uh, Sincerely Yours? No. The that, old one? Yeah, this is a movie from oh, the I 50s. Watch. I wish we had done it on Mystery Science Theater. I don't think we could have gotten the rights to it. But it's a movie. It's called Sincerely Yours. It's from the 50s. It stars Liberace as the mm-hmm. romantic le- uh, no. lead in it. Yes. And um, it's really amazing and hilarious. And um, it's kind of like you watch it. And just as you're kind of like, you know, you kind of get sick of just the fact that it's, you know, the joke wears off after a while that it's like Liberace, but he's like wooing all these women. But right. then the plot there's a development in the plot where he goes deaf. He's a musician. He goes deaf. <laughs> like like yeah. um like Beethoven. Yeah. yeah. And um and so he he's in his apartment overlooking Central Park. And so the last half of the movie is just him like looking at people through binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> it, gets, it gets like even creepier, you know. So it's that is a great bad movie. I, I, I wish I that. wish we could have done that on Mystery Science. Oh God! Like really well, we can something. do it together. Me, you, yeah. and your fucking girlfriend in jail. Yeah. So um. <laughs> Now, <laughs> Frank, we share a lot. We have a lot in common, uh, although you're Irish. I, you uh, went to rehab. You I dropped did. out of high school. <laughs> I did. Your parents sent you to. Did you have an intervention where they like, I kidnapped did. I, you? I, 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 no, it wasn't that exciting. But uh, I had an intervention. Um, I tell people that uh, that um, I wasn't allowed to uh, live here. Uh, during the Giuliani era, because I was considered a quality of life crime. <laughs> but uh, no, my, my, but so I was in New York and my family all had an intervention for me. And it was the thing where you, they sit around the, and they all, yeah. re, you know, go one at a time telling me how fucked up I am and how they love me, but I'm really fucked up and I've got to do something. And, and did so, you go, I'm fucked up? Hello, why do you think <clears throat> I'm fucked up? Yeah, now- but the thing is, is like I would have, I was so like, I was such a loser back right. then, like from being a, dr- a drug addict and an alcoholic that I, you know, I had no options. So if I had had any options, I would have said, oh, you, so- you guys don't know what you're talking about. I'm just staying in New York. Fuck this. But I had no options. Right. So they gave, handed me the ticket to uh, Minneapolis to go into drug rehab there. My brother Rex uh, accompanied me there. Aww. And uh, and that's... Uh, um, and so I ended up... But uh, ha- so it was like the best thing that could have happened. Of course. Yeah. Now, so your father died when you were 14, right? Yes. How yes. did he die? He died... Uh, he had had a stroke several years earlier and mm-hmm. um, he had finally had a, had a heart attack. And he was like a... Um, a, a hard drink, you know, he was very much like newspaper reporters right. in that era. Hard like, drink. Hey, how you doing? I, yeah. I got the story. I got the scoop. Yeah. <laughs> like, but like a workaholic, you know, right. and like, you know, didn't take care of himself. So he, right. he, he had an incredibly, when, when I look back at his life, it, it seems to me like an incredibly exciting life, but right. he, because he, you know, he traveled the world. He met every world leader. He knew every celebrity, Amazing. you know, but, but he, he drove himself to an early grave though. Yeah. And, how old were you? What, first of all, what high school did you go to? I went to um, uh, uh, Seward Park, uh, which is downtown. But I also... Where did you guys live? Well, the, here's the Upper thing. Upper East? N- well, at the time. But here's the thing. After my father died, my, my mother um, moved us to Southampton, uh, where we, we were, I was a townie there. We, we lived there all oh year long. Oh, my God. Which was horrible. And so I went to Southampton High School, which was a fucking nightmare. And then wh- how old were you when you dropped out? Uh, like in, you know, 17 or whatever. Like you know. senior year? Yeah, almost senior year, I think. Yeah, did you yeah. get a GED? Um, no, I never did. You're a fucking dropout? <laughs> I am. You're one of the smartest people I know. Well, that's the thing, but I, I was I was so fucked up back then right. that I, I, and thank God for comedy, because right. if it weren't for comedy, I would, you know, I, I, I'm a total screw up it, and there's nothing else I can do besides Right, I have this. no jo- other job skills yeah. either. So, um... Okay, and then you went to rehab, and you started performing in these no alcohol. Yeah, I, well, I'd done comedy in New York actually mm-hmm. in the eighties, but that was when I was still in my drinking and drugging right. period, and I just never got my shit together. And so it was only when I moved to Minneapolis, like nineteen eighty five, eighty six, and I sobered up. And then there was an incredibly. Uh, it was just the height of the comp right, stand up eighties yeah. comedy boom. An incredible scene in Minneapolis. Uh, I met all these 
great people, Liz Winstead, mm-hmm. Joel Hodgson, Jeff Cesario, mm-hmm. Joel Love Madison. Jeff. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so I just fell into that and it was like, it was, you know, it was a really, uh, wonderful thing that happened. It was, uh, it was like, I went from, from just fuck to doing everything I could to destroy myself to my life, uh, being renewed and, and having fun and doing, right. and finally doing what I really wanted to do in life. That's so awesome. Yeah. And so you're on Wellbutrin yeah. <laughs> in yes. the morning. I, yes, I take I take a, a lower dose than than I've been prescribed because um, I, I I took more and I f- I felt like my body wasn't reacting well. Really? Me, so so um, that's it. That's all you take at the moment. Yeah, I have in the past taken Paxil. And, yeah, uh, I'm on the Paxil. Zoloft. Yeah. Uh, the Zoloft makes me puke. Uh-huh. I'm on Paxil uh, mm-hmm. at night and then the Wellbutrin uh-huh. and Ritalin. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever think about switching insurance companies to see if you could save some cash? Progressive makes it easy to see if you could save when you bundle your home and auto policies. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states. Oh, Ritalin. Yeah. I didn't know that adults took Ritalin. Yes, it's extended release. <laughs> <laughs> Who's an adult? <laughs> I'm really not an adult. But, you know, I forgot to take a teach, and I forgot to take it yesterday. Now, where do you t- teach? At Einhorn School of Performing Arts. Oh. And you, you also teach, your, you also teach uh, private classes and Yeah, things. private classes. Mm-hmm. And, and groups and workshops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, solo performance. And then mm-hmm. I help executive women, like, not talk like mental cases when they're like and um so what we're doing here you know i really i'm so into women getting their due anyway yeah um what the fuck is that jesus thing up there what is it it's ironic okay chemda chemda's from israel i don't Jesus fucking carrying the cross across here. Oh, that's a that is a kill me now moment. <laughs> that was that's just for you in the show. Up? No, I think it, I have been fighting think, for a mezuzah. I'm getting that for I a present. I think we can all agree that if 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 Jesus were here today, he would have a podcast. Like, oh, he definitely <laughs> would, and he would be carrying yeah. the American flag. It might would I add. be like. Um, it would be called I Die for Your Sins. All right. <laughs> He'd be like, kill me now, yeah. too. Kill me I, now, too. I, yeah. He'd be like, uh, I, I, die for the, I die for the sins of premium subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> and if you really, I'll get sick if you, uh, if you subscribe. If you donate. If you subscribe uh, for a month, I'll just get a little sick. <laughs> if you subscribe, <laughs> pay the full price. I will die for you. I Someone will die pay. for yeah. your sins All if right. you if you go for our premium extras. Um, <laughs> so Frank, the bonding we've bonded over a lot of things. Right. At, number one, we hate people. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I have no. T- I love everyone, but uh, I have no like. Yeah, I have I'm no tolerance. I like love, I love everybody, but I hate a lot. Of right. Things. Yeah. And I hate. Like, there's a things that really piss me off, like tip jars. Uh, you know, I don't have a fucking tip jar. You made my coffee. Uh, Why do I have to then fucking tip you? You know, and, yeah, it, and it took 45 minutes for you to make a fucking coffee. Well, you know? yeah, because the the, the uh, person at the counter is, as far as I know, they're not depending on tips the way a waiter and waitress. Right. Is. And that pisses me off. Yeah. Like, this is what pisses me off about the waiter and waitress thing. Mm-hmm. We are paying their salary. Mm hmm. We pay waiters and waitresses salaries. Uh-huh. So it's like we go to a restaurant. Uh-huh. So you right? have a problem with tipping is what you're saying. No, I tip. I'm a, uh, am I yeah, not a very are. generous uh, tipper? Okay. I'm, I'm, so, I'm very, I'm very, very relieved, generous because I worked in a that. restaurant. Yeah, I tip. I worked in restaurants too. And I also tip anyone on a subway uh, who's performing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because it's not like oh, they're asking. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, um, the, the Louis episode that you did, the banjo player in that, I saw him on a subway platform in Williamsburg a wow. few weeks ago. He is fucking amazing, that really? guy. Really? Yeah. You know who I'm talking about? The, the yeah. banjo player? Yeah. Um, I guess Louis must have seen him. He's like a street performer, yeah. and he's like the best I street, put, I, he's the best street musician I've ever seen. That's awesome. Yeah. I actually, uh, when I worked on Rosie, would uh-huh. put um, you know unknown street performers uh-huh. on to sing Christmas Anyway, oh, that's who cool. Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, Rosie oh, okay. O'Donnell. Okay, yeah, she was on uh, John's show, and uh, I, I I met her for the first time. I, I was, love Ro. I said we have a lot of uh, mutual friends that you fired. 
But did uh, you say that? No, I did. I, well, I didn't go far. That got I didn't go far. All right, wait, listen. So um, how about how I can't? And now uh-huh. I'll say listen, and I'll go back to my thought uh-huh. that has fucking left my head. Okay. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Tip, tip, tip oh, charts. Tip. You're a great tipper. You. Do- I am a great tipper, uh-huh. but it's like. I do my job and no one tips. So I go to a restaurant mm. and I get service uh-huh. and it's not fair uh-huh. if the cook fucks up or, you know, the music's too loud mm. that a wait person should then get a smaller tip No, because, you know what I mean? And they they go into, hey, thank you. And, and they go into work and they're dependent on, like you're working for, there would be. You, the restaurant owner, needs people to fucking serve the food. Pay right. them. Exactly. Pay them well, and give them fucking health insurance. Here's, here's where, because I, I always leave a good tip. Um, there's a couple of, ca- of occasions where I haven't left a tip when the service is so un- over-the-top awful. And, and, and an instance of that is when there's something wrong in the kitchen, obviously. You're not getting your food for like an hour. And they don't come back to tell you. They don't you. come yeah. and they ignore you. <laughs> they, and and this, I had this one guy, he ignored me. And when I asked him about things, he acted like I was bugging him. Oh, fuck. And then when the food finally came, he put it on a plate, didn't look at me, and walked away. And I'm like, <laughs> that is unprofessional because if... If there's some, something wrong uh, in the kitchen, I get it. I'm not going to hold it against right. you. I, I'm not going to. That's actually your job. Yeah. It's a communication it job. Yeah. yeah. You're supposed to communicate right. between That's the like chef and That's like people on, on airplanes, too. What, what I hate is is the airline companies when there's something wrong and they don't tell you what's Oh, happening. I know. It's yeah. so controlling. Just tell us it's what's like going my family. on. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> why are you crying? Uh, nothing. Everything's fine. It's exactly how. Uh, you know, my family is, it's yeah. like, uh, 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 and then I find out like two days later, someone's dead, you know? So, <laughs> oh, you had a math test and I didn't, oh, really? Oh, okay. That's fine. Oh, I, I, I got a better grade now that I didn't know, you know, my uncle was dead. So, um, yeah. So the tipping, I, I don't feel that we should, you know, mm-hmm. pay for their salary. Well, they're, I they're, think if, if, yeah, if they change the system, um, and then the would, other but thing is, as long as the system is the way it is, you should leave a good tip. Okay, I know, opinion. I do. Yeah. But here's the other thing: the wine. Uh huh. So, well, you're you don't drink, right. but then and you get the bottle of wine. As Aram knows, I'm a little. I have been so good. I used to. I used to date this. Ugh, I can't even. It's so nauseating. <laughs> Who used to order a lot of uh, expensive wine, and uh, then I was like, oh yeah, we have to get expensive wine. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and everyone's like behind my back, all my uh, friends. Judy's not ordering the wine. Judy's not ordering. Anyway, so, <laughs> but then it like doubles the it doubles the thing. Do you tip because they fucking brought you a bottle of wine? Well, that's the thing is because I've noticed since I don't drink. Um, whenever a waiter or waitress comes to my table and says, oh, and can I get you some wine? And I'm like, no, thank you. I can see like a part of like them. Like shit. A part of them yeah. dies. Because, Absolutely. Because that's where uh, restaurants make most of their money is, mm-hmm. from, is from the alcohol and stuff like that. And it, it's what brings your your bill way up is is by, by getting wine. Or, or okay, that's, so why they me- don't, that's why they don't give waiters a paycheck right. because they will upsell right. just to make a Great. fucking lunch. So um, I don't know who that was talking, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> So, um, here's the other thing. I don't know if you're, since you don't drink, I don't. are you one of the, now this really pisses me Uh, off. This is a kill me now. uh, There's a group of us and we're all going out. uh, Okay. And the check comes and then like, you know, Lisa Leslie is like, (laughs) (laughs) oh, (laughs) Jennifer and I only ordered the uh, soup, and we had an appetizer, and she only had one glass of wine, so uh, we're going to only be... I'm like, who cares? All of it a all sudden, comes out in the wash. Like, it's it is, like when yeah. you go out with a group of friends that you go out with all the time, right. it all comes out in the wash. Right. I hate when people are like, um, actually, uh... <laughs> yeah, we're just going to put – or they'll get the waiter separately uh, or waitress and say, um, can you put $20.14 on this card? 
Yeah, I, I can't the word. cheat yeah, I agree. people. I'm like, just everybody pay, uh, right. just pay the same thing. And like, if I'm with people who don't drink, uh, I'm like, you know what? I'll get the wine. I'll do, uh, you know, I just, I'm cognizant of other, but don't fucking don't sit there with your it. cheap yeah. shit. Like every little penny. I, it's like, so I hate cheap people. It's That's petty. the thing that I cannot stand when people are cheap. Right. It is the most unattractive you know, like when you go out to dinner and someone's taking you out and you know they left a shitty tip. Uh, yeah. Like, and then you have to go back. Mm, oh, God, yeah, I've, done, a, that. I've done that. I've done that. We had a thing like that, um, a bunch of us, and, and we left the tip to this one guy who's a bit, and it was like at a Morton's or someplace mm-hmm. like that, you know. And he left the, this, and, and, and my friend actually went back to the restaurant and, and gave him a bigger Yeah, tip. I've done yeah. that. I've done that. Yeah. Because sometimes, like, you know, my mother, when we would go out, I'm like, Ma, she, now she ended up, you know, asking me, what should uh, I tip? And, and it's uh, you, because you have all the money in the world, don't you? Uh, well, if I was rich, I would. And I'm like, Ma, it's not 1942, okay? <laughs> a dollar is not like, you know what right. I mean? You know, they're like, I'll give her a dollar. <laughs> um, so she ended up being okay. But I, yeah, that really pisses me off. She can buy victory bonds. Yeah. <laughs> From Harpo Marx. Yeah. I don't know. I heard I heard something going on over there about Harpo Marx. But um the other thing that we really share mm-hmm. besides our disdain of and the other thing I really hate is when people don't do their jobs well. Like your job right. is to uh you know, um uh, uh get me a customer service representative. Like uh, I can't with the fucking hi. Hello. My name is Robert. No, it's not. You Your name what? is not I, Robert. I, I feel like I, I, <laughs> I've, um, I've gotten some like cosmic retribution because before I was in comedy and I worked in restaurants, mm-hmm. and any job that I ever had before I did comedy, I was the worst fucking worker mm-hmm. ever. I was, I was the weak link mm-hmm. in the chain. I ruined everything. Mm-hmm. And so and so now, then when I, you know, got into comedy and then like I got writing jobs on TV shows and here was something I was actually really good at, mm-hmm. then there'd always be like one person in the writing room who would be horrible and not do their job and they would just drive me fucking crazy. Right, right. You know, and, and I feel like it was like, you know, I was getting... It was, it's when people are entitled. Uh-huh. Like I think of these comics now uh-huh. and I remember being on the road. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have internet. No. We remember we would, I would go to these places. I'm stranded. Like you right. had to write, yeah. you had to figure, you had to read, you had to right. write. Um, you also, ha- you didn't have like, Oh, I'm going to make a two minute YouTube video and then I'm going to be able to close a show. No, you can't. Yeah, you had exactly. maps. Yeah. I was, I used to, I have PTSD when I think of all the places I was stranded for like two uh, weeks in Niagara Falls and this shitty, ugh. And you know, you couldn't call anyone cause it was like $8,000. Uh, so, but now these comics are like, yeah, and I did a video and, I, and it's like, you know, I don't yeah, know. I feel like, like social media taking, has uh, kind of yeah, ruined the whole I mean, process. Well, there's, there's good things about it, but there's also right. people, the, the comics who think that it's a shortcut for them right. are the ones who are fucked up. But I, you know, but hopefully there are comics who see there are so, some social now media, yeah media is a tool but i also have to get on stage every night and, oh every and work i mean i used to I, go I know, I know people like that yeah you know there's few and far between uh, i mean this this generation millennium uh, crap like they don't work and mm-hmm. their thumbs are going to be huge and they're you know there's this guy in my mother's nursing home uh-huh. his name's harold which was my father's name uh-huh. and she he always comes in because my mother gets the mm-hmm. new york times can i but so anyway i come in and he his literally cannot lift his head up. He always is looking down. Right. And so I walk in a couple of weeks ago and you know, my mother complains when people come in a room to visit her. It's like, yeah. I don't even know why they're coming in. Cause she's so miserable anyway. Yeah. So uh. I walk in and Harold's in there and his head's and my mother's like giving me the, you know, um, she's laying in bed, like, get him out of here. Oh, he's so annoying. Like these yeah. looks, you know? Uh. And, uh, he's, and he says, Oh, your mother and I were just watching, a movie. I'm mm. like, oh, really? Was it on the floor? I mean, he literally cannot <laughs> lift his head up. And uh, I thought, that's what everyone's going to look like. Yeah. People are really addicted <sighs> to phones, and and you they know, can't people, make. But it's like become a thing now, where to be in a group of people who are having a discussion or whatever, and to ignore what everybody's saying and to just look at your phone. That's not considered rude. You know, that's not considered rude anymore. Well, I went out with Ben and Uh, Elisa the uh, other night. Lisa's my partner. mm. And I said, no phones. Like Uh, it was my idea. 
leave them and I left it in the house. Uh, ben is so fucking addicted. He's mm-hmm. like, all right, let me make a deal with you. All right. When I, when my foot hits the restaurant, you can have my phone. And then when we leave and it hits the sidewalk, I get my phone back. I said, fine. And we had the best conversation. Uh. Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Miss Judy Gold. Since the podcast is Kill Me Uh. Now... Uh, and it's about what pisses you off. We share one of the one of the things that pisses me off the most. Also mm. pisses you off. Uh-huh. It's a person. Uh-huh. He's overweight. Uh-huh. He's a bully. Yes. Um, from New Jersey. Yes, he's in. Uh-huh. New, he's from New Jersey. Can uh-huh. you guess? He's governor. <laughs> Can you guess? <laughs> Who he is? He's. Uh, I think his name is Chris Christie. Ugh. And if you if you we're in Queens now, um, if you open the door, you can actually see him in Jersey. <laughs> He's a large man. Is the point I'm making? Yeah, Sarah Palin said, <laughs> "I can see Chris Christie from my house." <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's a large man, and and I only harp on what a fat tub of shit he is because he's a tub of shit, and, <laughs> and well, he's the fat. Thing yeah, is, yeah. is that. And he's a fat guy who wants to be judgmental of everybody else. Right, right, right. So, like, I am not a fattest or a (coughs) bodyist because, look, I'm 6'2 and I'm over 200 Uh, pounds. mm. I've been fat. I've been thin, you know. Mm. Um, I I call call, call the pot black or whatever. Right. I'm kettle the pot black calling pot. the kettle. Yeah. I'm the pot calling the kettle black, especially if there's uh, fondue in the kettle. Because I enjoy <laughs> it. Now I enjoy the fondue. <laughs> anyway, but the thing is, is that, and people get mad if I uh, say he's fat. Yeah. Because, first of all, he's not fat. He's mm. like. He's, he's, mo- he's morbidly obese. Right. And he uh, has the. He's um, a fat pig. He is. But I mean, it's he, and it, you wouldn't say he was fat. Well, first of well, all, now he's, he's got he's got the the sleeve or the mm, bypass or whatever. Oh, but that didn't you know, he lost a little weight, but yeah. it didn't and that it's unbelievable because mm. the belt is uh, up to his yeah. man boots. Yeah. <laughs> and he's acting like he's the coolest thing. Like he right. acts like he's cool. He is. And now and, he's his latest proposal was uh, is he wants to just, you know, to have cuts in social security. I know. Is, yeah. He flip you know flops what? like he gets up. But, but what did he flip flop yesterday? Well, well, I was just want to say though about the social security is um it's weird because um he's the only person who's um social security number is also his weight. I mean, he really <laughs> gets up there. And That's why I love Frank. <laughs> but he pisses me off uh-huh. on a visceral level mm-hmm. because I'm from New Jersey uh-huh. and I went to high school right. with People like that. Mm. He's a bully. He is. He's uh, a liar. I mean, yeah. and you don't say if he's, I, he's a, you know, you could not, you could easily never talk about him being fat because the main point of him is that he's incredibly corrupt. <laughs> if and, he was really yeah. nice and a good leader, yeah, we wouldn't me. be talking about but his weight at all. he tells people to yeah. shut up and calls them idiots. I've never done a fat joke about Dom DeLuise in my life. I love Dom know? DeLuise. <laughs> yeah. But Chris yeah. Christie, I will, you know. But how does he, like, I don't under, like, this pisses, <laughs> this is fucking pisses me off. Uh-huh. Like, how does this unattractive... This week's episode of It's Judy Show with Judy Gold is sponsored by BetterHelp. And if you know me, which I think you do because you're listening to my podcast right now, you know that I am a big advocate for therapy. I think it benefits everyone. I think there's so many people who need it, who don't partake. It is so important for your emotional health and well-being. Therapy is fantastic. It is in every stretch of the imagination. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, please do it. But please give better help a try. It is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible. It suits your schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. I have switched therapists in my life. I've had many, many therapists and you know, sometimes it's not a great fit for you, but don't give up. Therapy is beneficial. You can learn about yourself. You can process and just be emotionally healthy. I'm telling you, do it. Better help is great because, you know, when I used to schlep to my therapist's office, it was so annoying. You have to do it and you sit there and you wait and then... 
I'm telling you, doing it online is fantastic. And BetterHelp is amazing. I know a lot of people have used it. So if you're thinking about therapy, go to betterhelp.com. Let the gratitude flow. This is gratitude month, people. So you need to let the gratitude flow with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Judy Gold, J-U-D-Y-G-O-L-D, today, and you will get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Judy Gold. You're welcome. Uh, Lie, like he's such a liar. Yeah. He's a fucking liar. Uh-huh. Get away with all this shit. It's like so corrupt. And then say I could beat Hillary Clinton, and then like rush fat asshole who's like been married seventeen times and times and is an oxycontin mm. uh, addict. Uh-huh. How does he start? So he, I just, I, I, yeah. I, uh. Well, it's like they live in, um, you know. Everything they do resides over there on the wrong side of history. Right. You know, whatever you want to say about Hillary, like when I saw her um, her video where they introduced her campaign and there's like a same sex couple in it. There's like people of every race, right. every color, every gender. And you're like, like to me in the context of the Republican field, like, like I thought that was pretty fucking great. That oh, she, that she absolutely. Put that out, you know? And they're all like, oh, they paying him. Yeah, oh, it's so stupid. And yeah. I'm like, you know, but, but when you consider the alternative um, and that she's at least talking about these things and these other people like um, feel like they're never going to get a boner again if right. a gay person eats a pizza, right, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so Just not pepperoni. Yeah. It's like they're h- having wedding cakes and pizza. Like that's going to destroy their heterosexuality. Right. That's it's literally like what, what they think, you know. Off. This piss is uh, kill me now moment. Mm. Jerry Sandusky uh-huh. is allowed to get married. Uh, His, yes. And he gets all the federal mm. and mm. state benefits right. of being married. Uh-huh. The Menendez brothers. Charles Manson. Although Charles he, Manson. He called it off, which I was happy about because I yeah. think that girl is hot. But anyway, <laughs> I. <laughs> uh, all his girls were hot. He yeah, has good he, taste. He, he had a way with the ladies. So yeah. that's a lot about him. Yeah. But all these fucking people. <laughs> uh, they can get married. They're entitled to every governmental yeah. and, and state mm. you know, benefit. We're not asking for. We're just asking. You live with someone for 40 fucking years. You uh, contribute to society. Uh, you, you know, why do you have to pay a tax on their estate when you, you know, or they can't visit them in the hospital? Like, it fucking pisses me yeah. off. There is a new show on A&E uh, Network. I think it's called Nice to Marry. And or it's something about Married at First Sight. I think that's what it's called. Oh, yeah, I've heard And of it's that. people that uh, it's basically a game show where people are like, sure, I'll marry someone I've never met. And right. then they get married. Mm-hmm. And they know, just I heard follow some, them around. I heard this about this new show, <laughs> and um, it's called I, I don't know what it's called. Something like Mary Mary in a Minute or, or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Fox just, it, has a show called A Bigot at First Sight. That, bigot, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's called the Fox yeah. Network. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's a great show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's like one. you you look at a person and instantly um, hate them because of right. their color. Yeah, I, I really uh, I hate that. Uh, yesterday, what what did he say yesterday? He and then he flipped it. It was mm. about the vaccines. Oh, he was yeah. like very anti-vaccine, and which is which is crazy that he would object to uh, any uh, procedure that involves getting a free lollipop. Right, I just right. don't understand that. <laughs> But yeah, he was like anti that but then he realized, you know, you know, that he's that that, that that's not going to get me. Yeah, anywhere. someone goes, he's... uh, no, I I know you can't hear me cuz you're so fat. I said <laughs> I actually said yeah. that you should get back. Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah, I, I yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah, he just pisses me off. Yeah. And the, and you know what else pisses me off? Parents who don't vaccinate their kids. That's that's a horrible horrible I thing. I know. Uh, and now they're all flip flopping. One woman had and five. I, you know, I work at uh, Sirius XM where they they give a fucking show to Jenny McCarthy. I can't believe it. Dude, I had I was in negotiations yeah. uh-huh. for a show. Uh huh. Like everything was set, mm. and then, you know, sorry, Judy. Yeah. And now we have a I know, better I don't show. Care. I love this podcast. <laughs> Woo! <so. laughs> sure, but her, but Jenny McCarthy's Every show. Every other is, show sucks. It does. Yeah. It is kind of uh, good. It's called the uh, the. I'm ir- gonna kill this thing. Yeah. Jenny McCarthy's show is called the Irresponsible Parent Parenting Hour. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I got to go on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Frank. Uh-huh. Um, I love you. 
Oh, I love you too. No. Uh, we would like to end. Uh, first of all, thank you for being. Oh, thank you so much. My for first guest. Oh, I'm, Kill I'm, me I'm, now. I'm so honored that I'm your first guest. Is I that true? You. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I love Fran. Good, and good choice. Good choice as a first guest. I know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and also, you you know, you're on the Twit. Uh, the Twitter, the Twatter, uh, and you're on. Do you have a you have Facebook, right? I'm I always on see. Facebook. Yeah, yeah I'm on Facebook do. and Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm very um, uh, active right. on social social media. Also, uh, what about um, and you have a girlfriend in jail? Yes, you have a felon girlfriend. <laughs> now, have you been contacting her? Uh, I'm a, I, I can only write to her, so I've written her a letter, which we'll get to her soon. And then has she uh, written she, back? She can call me, but. Has she, she called she, you? She called me, but I wasn't around. And I, and she just is it like on like on Serial where they're like, call from? Yes, exactly. So and so penitentiary. A, yeah, you, you get a message like that. Does yeah. the Serial theme music play in the I've background? Never, I never listened to Serial. So. Oh, my God. you got to listen to that. I, I, yeah, I missed it. So. It's re- it, You can get it. You didn't I miss know. it. Well, yeah, I just, it just escaped my notice. Somehow. All right. Um, they're not paying for advertising. Okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> it's at Frank Conniff, right? Your Twitter. Yeah. Frank so your Conniff. Twitter's at Frank Conniff. Yes. And your website is Frank Conniff. So it's Frank Conniff. Conniff. Com, com. Where people can listen to my, my podcast. Right. So that's C O N N I F F. And what's your podcast? C O N N I F F. C O N N I F F. And what's your podcast? My podcast is called uh, Podhouse 90, which and is a riff on the uh, 1950s show called Playhouse 90, right. which was an anthology of plays. And this is an anthology of radio plays that I write. And I've done three so far, and I'm going to do another one very soon. And, and do you have guests on that? I've had um, a great cast. I've had Eddie Pepitone. And, um, uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> you, and I did them all in L.A., I'm telling you. Why the fuck would you do them in L.A.? Because I, that's, I live there when I did them. Well, what you haven't lived there in a while. I know. That's why I'm finally gearing up to do, do a new one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If I'm not your first guest... It's not a guest thing. It's a cast. I, if I'm not in the next cast. Oh, okay. This is going to be awkward. <laughs> um, can you come see Clinton the Musical? I will. I would love lover, to. With your lover, John Fugelson? Uh, we will come. As I a, bet you will come. And uh, <laughs> I will come as I watch yes. you as Eleanor Roosevelt. I know. you will. And Linda Tripp. That's oh, where you really. Okay. Yeah. Um, Frank. She, so she, she, that must be hard uh, to play a, a character like Linda Tripp, who who was the least sympathetic person ever. Oh my god! Um, it I is listened. Fucking brilliant! I listened to tapes uh, of her talking to Monica on the phone. Uh, oh my god! And an you awful, know what was interesting? She's from New Jersey. Uh, she was born in Newark. I was uh, born in Newark. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really got into her psyche uh, of like, because she was this big. You know, she was all like you know, preppy and want right. to be popular, but uh, she was like big and unattractive. Right. And I kind of feel like there's an element of her being jealous mm, right, of right. Monica. Cause she's the one getting all yeah. the, you know, and the whole, she's such a C yeah. she is a C you <laughs> next Tuesday. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and she's also kind of cunty too. Yes. <laughs> she's a cunt. <laughs> I'm, this is for CBS. I'm not sure. We oh, might have just, to bleep that. We're going to so, have to bleep this entire okay, show. Okay, shut up. So um, thank you so much, Frank. Oh, thank and thank you, you for, you for sharing. What, would you come back and tell I'll us come back more any, things that piss you off? Anytime you want me back, All right. I'm, I'm, I'll be here for All sure. All right. Well, do you want to hear words of wisdom from Ruth Gold? Yes, I do. Do we have anything available? Mm. Absolutely. Okay, here we mm. go. This is why I I'm love I, I I love that closing segment when you did it earlier. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Are you down in the dump? A little blue? <laughs> I have just the medicine for you. A voicemail from my mother. Judith, the message is: Whenever you get here, I don't think my teeth will fall out before then. I don't know what happened to my toothbrush, but can you buy me three mediums so I can hide one or two? And um, uh, a toothpaste, I like a large cold date. At the moment, that's all I require at this time, but uh, who knows what will be gone by later. Okay. Roll <laughs> 
That's my mother in the nursing home thinking everyone's stealing her toothbrush. Um, <laughs> it's a yeah, funny two, joke you yeah, like to play on two, her. Yeah. Two of them that she could hide. Yeah, right? she has yeah. to hide too. Uh-huh. Um, boy, I love that woman. Um, Frank, thank you so much you. for being on Kill Me Now. Uh, follow us. On, are we on Twitter? Or follow me at JudyGold.com and Instagram at JudyGold.com. At JudyGold. It's J-E-W-D-Y. G-O-L-D. Uh, my co- other, <laughs> and uh, uh, at Judy's assistant, J E W D Y. No, it's J U D Y. It's J E W Wench. <laughs> I spell it like you do. Judy's assistant. assistant. Dot com. That's mm. you can talk to Lauren, who's mm. doing the board and mm. is not allowed to talk. Right. Um, <laughs> thank you to Kemda uh, and the Keith and the Girl Studios. Yeah, we love Keith place. and the Girl. Yeah. The one of the you know the first podcaster, mm-hmm. Chemda and Keith. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chemda's the brains behind the organization, of course, because she's the Jew. And uh, <laughs> so, CBS. thank you for letting me use your, uh, you know, your your brilliant studio here in Queens. It's really easy to get to. Um, and you are listening to Kill Me Now on the CBS Podcast Network. Thank you to CBS. Yeah. You know, wow, Les just... Moves and I are really close. What does CBS stand for? You... It. Yeah, what does it say? Something broadcast. Uh, Columbia Broadcast. Columbia. Are you going right. to ever have uh, Charlie Rose on? I'd you love think? to have Charlie Rose on. It would Rose be great. On. You know what? If I interviewed Charlie Rose, I, I would ask um, if you could interrupt any figure from history, who would it be? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Every time he talks, I'm going to go, oh, that's great. So, uh, (laughs) Frank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for listening to the first Kill Me Now podcast. Tune in next week for yet another. I'm Judy Gold. And, uh...